in in the, in the Buddhist practice, we do a lot of, uh, in, when we're working on, uh, on the Heart Sutra, there's a lot of, in, in the highest philosophical teachings, we talk a lot about emptiness, the emptiness of, 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 na- of the true reality of nature, and the emptiness of existence as we see it, and what that means. And I want to talk a little bit about that, because I find that that is one way to um, navigate through our fears. Uh, we do a lot of work on ourselves, we do, uh, a lot of us, we do a lot of work on various levels. And even in Buddhism, we do a lot of work on, um, even in understanding um, the selflessness or the, uh, uh, the emptiness of, of ourself and of phenomena. But it could be applied just as much to our fears, that we realize our fears aren't as concrete as we think they are. And if we actually have a practice or something, a, a way of framing our minds, then maybe we can, as I said, navigate through our fears so they're not, they don't have as much power as we allow them to have. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And I just want to offer that, you know, the concept, since it's a, a Buddhist Sangha, uh, the idea of emptiness, to bring that in, is to look at the, the true nature of reality <laughs> for a moment and see if we can apply that to fear. Because fear has a function, it does exist. Right? It does exist in the same way that all phenomena exist. And that's the main thing um, with the concept of emptiness, is that often one of the biggest mistakes with this idea of emptiness is that if it's empty, it's nothing, or it, it doesn't exist. And that's not true. It's like when, they, when you, some of you, and this is from my tradition, so if anyone has a different tradition and you've learned it differently, I respect that, and please say something, but I'm just offering it from my perspective and how I, that's all I can do. And the concept is so vast, and here you have Manjushri sitting back there, he should be telling the story, um, because he knows it, he is it, um, the Buddha of of wisdom. And, And if you look at over there for a moment at Manjushri, you see that he's holding a sword, and the reason why he's holding a sword is not to look cool, even though he does look cool with a sword. But it's, um, it's the symbol of cutting through the confusion. It's the point of it is that this is the sword of truth, the sword of dharma. And it's through the dharma that we can navigate through the confusion, through the illusions of how we perceive reality. And the idea is that there is reality. It just isn't how we perceive it. That's it. Everything exists. You exist. That chair exists. I exist. War exists. But it doesn't exist how we perceive it. And according, the very basis, according to um, the teachings on emptiness and the Heart Sutra, is that things exist, but they don't exist how we perceive them, and how we perceive them is that they are concrete, that they exist inherently that they exist independently of other things, independent of other causes and conditions, that they are permanent. These are concepts that, th- that is the whole point of understanding and, pract- and, and, and going through the process of understanding emptiness. Is, so we, we look at each other and we, and we see each other yet we see each other as if we exist concretely, as if, we aren't, as if we don't change, as if we are independent and not interdependent or dependent on conditions and causes, as if we're concrete. Do you get that? And that is the whole point of, of the practice of understanding um, the nature of true reality and the emptiness. So the point is, is that Things exist, they don't exist as we, as we perceive them. And there's a relative reality, and there's an ultimate reality, in a sense. And the relative reality, you could say, is how we are perceiving each other now. Like, that chair really exists concretely. The ultimate reality is seeing its true nature, which is empty of inherent existence. It's really that simple. The concept is that simple. Realizing it and really seeing it is quite a task. 
could you say it again, please? Because it sort of didn't. I tried to understand it and didn't quite get it. Right. If you perhaps do it a little bit easier. Sure, I'll try to do it. <laughs> okay. Um, so take a look at that chair, and that chair exists, correct? Would you say, Donald, that that yes. chair exists? Okay. So the point of this is to say, how does it exist? And on a relative level, in a level that we human beings can see, it, um, it exists concretely. It's independent of you. It's, it, it stands on its own. But if we look at it ultimately and see the ultimate reality of it, we see that it's empty of all that. Uh -huh. That it couldn't exist without having a function. Right. It couldn't exist without someone making it. Uh -huh. Thank you. So, so one example I always give that works for me is the idea of borders. I, when I was a kid, I, you know, before I crossed any state borders or anything like that, I saw cartoons. So in the cartoons, when they show borders, they're black lines that run through a country, right? Or, or a city or whatever. So I really, as a kid, when we're driving over, I was like, ooh, we're going to cross, for the first time, I'm going to cross a state border. And I was expecting to see a big black line running through the fields <laughs> and the highway. <laughs> and it wasn't there. So, the que so a border, but so it doesn't, ex you don't see it, right? But it does exist, correct? Borders exist. Borders, so uh, they exist in the sense that they have a function. I mean, borders exist, right? There are pe many people throughout history who have died because of borders, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yes? Well, a border is just, you know, a concept that somebody's invented. It's not something that's really there. In right. the sense, this chair is really is a solid object. A border is just, you know, like an imaginary line. Yes, but it exists. Well, I guess that goes to what you mean by exist. Well, just by said, would you say that there are people who have died because of borders, or that yeah. there that certain places you have to have a passport to be able to get to because of borders? Yeah. So it influences other people. It has a function. It influences other people. The border itself doesn't. It's the importance that other people attach to it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Wise man. <laughs> So in a sense, ultimately, relatively, it doesn't, you don't see it. Ultimately, it has a function, and it is, it is, it is, it is affecting us. So therefore, on one level, it exists, but not in the way, as I'm saying now, that you can actually see it. So let your mind just dance with that one. Let your mind, another, so it, 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 it's, it, this is, this, does anybody else see that? It really, it's, the idea is to crack your mind open a little bit and to, and to let that dance. Could you no, I was just going to say <clears throat> that they do exist in the fact that you see maps and you see um, globes and mm -hmm. there are cartographers and things are drawn and things, my property line has borders right. and um, there are fences that are erected along the borders. So it's there. Yeah. It's there. It's, but I, I can see the sort of distinction he's trying to make, but perhaps um, his point that the chair is solid is a better um, sort of yeah. example that you were using initially. Right. Well, I th <clears throat> thank you. But I think in, ultimately the point of the meditation on emptiness is to see that none of it exists, whether it's a border or a chair or you, in the way we think it exists. That its true <clears throat> nature is empty of all of what, how we perceive it and that our perception of it is limited, in a sense, therefore limited. And the practice is to, is to get to a point where we can see that expanded state. That's the basis of, it's, it's, it's really quite something, and, and, and I am, again, I am not a qualified teacher to talk about it. I'm just offering the pers simple perspective on it. That basically the theory is, is that um, how we view reality is a perception is on one level you could say an illusion, it's all an illusion. And the illusion is based on the fact that we, we sit across from each other and we can say we are separate, that we are, that we are uh, concrete, that we don't change, that we're permanent. And, 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 the, and that this is, this, you're giggling. Yeah. 
Yeah. 